This is a simple pendulum. Now, you are not to go to sleep at this point. But all I want to show you here is it's got a length from the point of suspension to the centre of mass at the bottom, and the period of the pendulum is the time it takes for a full cycle, across and back again. Now, if you go and look up any standard physics textbook and look up the pendulum, it'll give you a relationship that allows you to predict the period of the pendulum if you can measure its length. And that goes t equals 2 pi square root of the length over this g, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. So as long as we know g, we can calculate the period of the pendulum. But what we're going to do today is we're going to write, rewrite this and make g the subject. So let's just do that and write g equals 4 pi squared L over T squared. Now what this means is that we can take a simple pendulum and by simply measuring the length of the pendulum and measuring the period of the pendulum, we can work out what the acceleration due to gravity actually is. Now this is a very, very common experiment in high school and university. Now, why do I want to do this, particularly if I already know what g is? At this latitude, g is equal to 9.796 plus or minus 0 0.003 metres per second squared. Now, if I already know that, why do we bother to do this exercise? Well, the exercise is not to find out what g is but to have a look at how precisely we can measure that using a simple pendulum. Because you can measure L and you can measure T, but until we know how good those measurements are, we can't say how good our final measurement is. Now if we look at this equation, if I am out by one part in a hundred in my measurement of L, that'll affect G by one part in a hundred. And I can write down a little expression, delta G over G depends on the uncertainty in the length L, delta L over L. But I've also got to measure the time of the period. And what that means is because I've got a T squared there, T times T, if I can measure not only how long the period of the pendulum is, but what the uncertainty in that is, I'm multiplying it in twice and so that will give me a double effect, 2 delta t over t. And once I've calculated g, I can work out what delta g is, the uncertainty. And that's our aim today, because any person off the street can simply come in and make a few measurements and tell us how big something is. It's a real scientist that can not only tell you what the final result is, but what is the precision of that result? How good is the result? And so really what our problem is today is not so much measuring the length and the period of the pendulum, but learning how to estimate how good those measurements are.